Hello friends, good five with you in this morning. <laughs> if it looks early in the morning, my eyes look all puffy and I look half asleep. It's because my eyes are all puffy and I'm half asleep. So uh, <laughs> um, you're probably thinking about the shirt too. I would never wear anything like that in public. I know it has a nasty word written on it, but you see my son thinks it's funny because I'm bald and he must think that I think I'm good looking. Oh, I hear Haven, that's the cat. So, anyway, so he bought this shirt for me. It is kind of funny. <laughs> that's what he does, though. Let's get the cat in. Come on, come on. That's Haven. <laughs> Haven's 17 years old. 17. And of course, if Haven comes in, you know who has to come. Coach Big's dog. Got a bunch of coffee cups. Let me use this one. This one. First things first. Gotta get a cup of coffee. It's time for a new Keurig. It's moving kind of slow. Coach Big and I had some cheese and crackers last night. So it's the remnants of that. <laughs> Two dirty knives. <laughs> but if you're wondering why uh, I've got you with me so early, uh, I've been working on some videos for this week and you know every now and then you'll have a problem with the camera or something and well, I learned some hard lessons while using some new camera stuff this week and lost a lot of footage which isn't a problem because I'll just do it again I don't worry about that stuff um, but I had a great suggestion from someone this morning and I'm like hey if I'm gonna make stuff might as well make something somebody actually wants to see <laughs> what a novel idea I'm gonna walk into my office and I'm gonna show you after I get this cup of coffee made. I went in there and booted my computer up. Try to check my emails in the morning. Try not to pour water all over the countertop like you just did. <laughs> I did that on purpose. Clean up the mess. Now run it through a second time for a little, just a little bit more. Like my all American Splenda packs, I got red, white, and blue on them. <laughs> Get the crema out. This is what Coach Vic got me. International light caramel macchiato. All right, let's go look at this email. I think you might find it interesting. The wedding is this Saturday, so wish us luck on that. Coach Vic's been a wreck. And that offloaded a little video this morning also. My neighbors came by the other day. I'm gonna do a thing on being a good neighbor. And this is the email. Dear Coach Bob, I am a recent subscriber and fan. Have a, I have a Spider RTS and am planning on obtaining a tow behind trailer. There are a lot of podcasts on different types of trailers, but nothing on actually how to drive with the trailer attached. Such questions as, how does it feel, turning tips or backing up, and what kind of speeds can you go with the trailer? I think these are important questions that should be answered. I also hope to meet you and Coach Vic in person one day. Thank you, George. All right, George, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to send a response back to your email here in just a minute, and uh, then I will make that video today. And Wednesday morning, so today is Monday morning, um, I'm, I've got a lot going on. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to make it today. Edit it maybe this evening. Try to get it all posted tomorrow. And then make it public Wednesday morning. That's kind of how the process is going to work. So maybe I'll do a video of me making the video too. We'll see. I don't know. But anyway, that's the plan. So thank you, George. So if you're interested in a freedom trailer. See, I'm starting to wake up now. If you're interested in a freedom trailer and ready to do your thing, it'll be a great video for you. All right, I'm gonna drink some coffee. I know you'd like to join me, but go make your coffee and go talk to your wife or your husband or your sister or your uncle or your brother or your buddy. I don't know, whoever you drink coffee Obviously. with. So the first thing I wanna show you is how to hook a trailer up. If you've never hooked one up, let's do that first. Let's start at the very beginning and not make any assumptions that anyone has ever used a trailer before.
All right, so a little about the trailer. Got your trailer ball. This is the wiring harness on the uh, spider itself. This is where it's mounted. I keep the plugs covered right there. There they are. And this is going to plug into that, okay? These right here are your security. That way if your hitch fails, these keep your, this, this keeps your trailer from dragging down or from uh, just rolling off on the highway. So the first thing you're gonna do is make sure this is up. That loosens everything inside so it will drop all the way down on the hitch. So come over here, drop it on the hitch. Next thing, you take this, make sure it's all the way down, and it is. You can see how this little piece here locks up under, locks up under that piece. Take this, see how it pulls that piece up? It's like a little fulcrum clamps on the ball. That's that, that locks into place. See this piece locks it, so when you undo it, you'll lift it like that, okay? Next thing, you have this pen. Pen goes through the hole. Now, this can't accidentally come up. It's locked into place. You don't want your pen to be able to risk falling off, so this piece goes around the end. That's that part of the hitch. Now, on the trailer hitch, you've got these that are secure. You can see this just hooks right through, right there. You've got another one on the other side right here and I am doing all of this with one hand so now you've got to plug your harness in you can see you've got three males one female three females one male very simple now when I first got this thing I will tell you it was really really tight but it's not really really tight now and then this is a security point holds those two together. That way it won't drag if it comes undone. What you don't want to happen, you don't want this pinched. So what you do is you run this through here and you want to give enough slack to where it's not going to bind in a turn. And then this I run on the outside away from the tire. That way it doesn't drag against the tire. And that is that. Okay, there we go. So that's what it looks like. And that's all there is to hooking it up. That goes very quick. I can have this thing done in less than a minute. So what I have done, I've driven down to a church. It's just about a mile from my house. And what I am going to do is I'm going to do some backup skills with this. Let me show you what I've got. I got a camera here on my handlebar. So as I move my handlebar, you're going to see it. You're going to see that camera move. I also mounted a camera right here. So you can see how the uh, how the trailer reacts to turns, and I measured in my road at home how wide two lanes were. Now two lanes were about seven paces. So I'm going to go from this blue line to that white line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So from that white line to that blue line would pretty much be indicative of the width of a two-lane road. So if we're going to turn around, our desire would be to turn around inside of those lanes. You know, three-point turn, that sort of thing. Um, I have Coach Vic's wheelchair in the Spider. I have an ice chest with some ice water because it is blistering hot out here. May not look like it. It's uh, heat does this every day. You know, we we uh, we do have the everyday thunderstorm cycle going on right now. Now, what I'm doing is I'm putting out a few cones here. The goal is that when we pull in and out of parking spaces, we don't, certainly we don't hit cones, but not only do we not hit them, we don't encroach upon them in a way that would put us in harm's way if that was a vehicle. So that is the width of a road, and this would re represent you parking in a parking lot, and if you are inside the corner of this cone, because we've got to realize a car would be right here. That's where the side of the car would be. So if you can stay inside that while pulling in and backing out, you'll also be able to look at the length of the spider with that on there in a standard parking lot, and I think these are pretty standard. Might be a little shorter. These are longer for sure because they go up against the curb as opposed to having the 
the concrete block there to stop it. But we're going to use these because that's what we normally see in parking areas. At least that's pretty indicative of what I see around here. I'm not going to wear a jacket or my gloves because it is hot, like I said. Let's go. I've got the camera on the handlebar going. I've got this one going. Let's go ahead and start this one. All right, make sure we're recording. It is. I got a flashing light. See if I have a flashing light on this one. I do. So at this point, we should have three cameras going. I'll be panning between those three to give you an idea of what this is going to look like. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to park. We're just going to show you what parking looks like with a trailer. Now understand this, parking is was something that I was pretty apprehensive about. And when I first got this thing, um, I was very cautious about where I parked because I wanted to be able to get out of there. And I'll show you some things that I did that might help you. Uh, but if it's going to help you, you're going to have to enter the weight room. So <laughs> first thing, parking is easy. You pull in just like you normally would. And you can see the, the side of the trailer followed me nicely. Um, as with always with the spider, you have to worry about hitting the nose. So here's where I am. I'm going to hit the parking brake so we don't roll. So you can see I could go forward maybe six inches there without hitting. I am right on the edge. You can see I'm actually sticking out a little bit, but no worse than that van down there. That's pretty normal. The one thing you do have to think about, and this is one of the reasons I like to back up into a parking space, is this is low and people may not see it when they back up. They may just see the top of the spider and back right into your trailer. So backing up, I have also learned, is a skill. And one of the things that you want to think about is if you want the trailer to go right, then you have to turn left. Okay, the trailer goes right, you turn left. It goes the opposite way that you turn. Then what you do, you subtly start to line yourself up with it. So I'm going to back up so that the trailer goes that way. That's, what, that's our goal. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to turn the vehicle left, which is going to make the tail of the spider go out in that direction, which due to the geometry is going to force those two wheels to turn in that direction. So here we go. So you can see, now I'm watching my line over here too. There it goes, it starts to turn. Now because this is a very short trailer, now I have to watch this side over here where the car is or it's going to jackknife. You see how very, very quick that thing can spin around on you. Okay, So you don't want to go that radical with it. So let's do it again. So it's going to be more subtle this time. I'm going to kind of line it up. All right. And notice I do it in increments. I will turn a little straight and then I will go a little crooked. Well inside of everything, not a problem. Very, very easy. So we're just going to swing out wide here for the moment and snap a Yui very easily. So let's say we want to back into one of these things. What's that going to look like? Well, if you have the room, it's always nice, but you don't always have the room. But what you will normally have room to do, also practice your backing up, pushing the, just pushing the trailer. And if you imagine, don't think of yourself steering the trailer, always look back and imagine you're pushing it. You can push that thing in a straight line. Once you can push it in a straight line, you will understand the geometry much greater way. So what I do, we're not encroaching on these vehicles yet, and we're going to put it in that parking space right there, the closer one. I might be a little bit tight uh, because I didn't. Uh, so what I want to do is counterintuitive. You're going to want to turn the spider this way, but if you do, that trailer is going to turn the other way. So what we want to do is line it up. So we're going to turn this way. And it's going to start to turn. See, and I told you I was a little tight. That was right. <laughs> so let's uh, come up here. We're still well out of our space. So remember, you're going to, it's always counterintuitive. So now I'm going to chase it. And that's what I call chasing the trailer. You got to chase it. Um, 
So you can see it may take you a few times, but what I'm wanting to do now is just straighten it out because I'm, I'm there. See it straight? Notice the trailer's straight. So if we can keep the trailer from turning now, right? All right. We're good. We're in. Now, as I come back, I'm going to show you something. We'll hit the park and brake again. Look at the height of the trailer. Now, this trailer sits pretty dang low. It's going to hit there. So, I'm about a foot away, and you get better at this. It would be nice if you mount a little. There are little cameras that you can mount, little trailer cameras you can mount. Um, and I may end up doing that later, but it doesn't mean doesn't mean that much to me now so I'll just come on back to I'll eyeball it and that looks about right hit the park and brake let's see how I did now if a vehicle goes to back up they see this tall profile they're gonna be less prone to hit that I've got that angled in a little bit so that I have a little more room and you can see I'm right over the edge of it that's where I'd want to be that's what it would look like so that's parking. Now let me show you something that I've done. I'm going to come off the parking brake and I'm just going to push this thing out here a little bit and stop it. Now this is something that you don't want to do unless you're working out. Now these trailers are not that heavy. But let's say you got in a real bind, a real problem. You can take this. You can go up under it. You can move it. I have had to do that in a very, very tight where, you know, some knucklehead comes in and he's so close and sticking far out that there was just no way I could get out. I mean, I don't know how he didn't hit the thing getting in there. So there's that side of it. So <laughs> if you're in a modicum of fitness, I think that you can easily do that. So let's look at U-turns. Say, for example, you hit a dead-end road. Here at a dead-end road, you've got two lanes. It's dirt and a ditch on each side. You're going to have to put it in reverse. I'm going to turn my wheels to the left, like I'm making a left-hand turn into the ditch. That's going to turn the trailer to the right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to snap it around here. Once I get that, now see? See, I started to turn already. I'm going Now the idea is to push it. So I start turning the handlebars to try to align myself with the trailer. You're pushing, 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 and there we are. And there we go, inside the line, just like that. So a three-point turn, a two-point turn, those things are really easy to do. Uh, I did do some practicing when I started doing this. So let's say we're on the road and we have to make a U-turn though. Uh, we made a wrong turn and we really don't want to back up. How tight can we go? Well, the first thing you're going to have to do is look at the side of the road and see how far out you can go. Most roads you can go about a foot off the road. So we're going to do that. We're going to go about a foot. Right? Once you're here, it's as tight as you can go. The turn radius of the spider is going to be your limitation. You see right there, I am four feet off of the road. That would be the edge of a ditch. Okay? So you want to go as wide as you can, knowing that on a two-lane road, three feet on each side will do it. And that's what you want to know. If you look and you go, okay, I need three feet in the grass to not have to do anything but turn around, you notice the trailer did not impact my turning radius. So let's go about three and a half feet. There's three and a half feet right there. Now we'll snap a U, and we're going to be about three and a half feet over here. There it is. Look at that. And that's the trailer. Exact. It follows your same path of travel. Now. Let's look at this. You're at a gas station. You come out of the gas station. You put gas in it. You have to make a hard left because some knucklehead sparked the truck out there. And the end of the gas pump thing is right there. You want to make a turn. Okay, you're here. You finished. You want to go straight across there. Now watch the spider. Watch the path of the spider. Watch the trailer. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Okay, see how much, see how much space I picked up? Picked up about 8 to 12 inches. So that's as much as you're going to pick up. So let's let's try that again. It's starting to rain, of course. Um, so I'm here. So now what I know, now that I know that, right, I'm going to go about 8 to 12 inches out, maybe a couple of feet out, then make my hard turn and watch. There it is. Plenty of room. Plenty of room. 
and you can see it's pretty close it's pretty darn close to following that front tire if you're doing normal normal maneuvers it will go inside of where your front tire is you can see that I'm gonna intentionally hit a cone with my front left tire going straight and see if the trailer back tire will hit it there we go there's the cone hit it is inside that cone those are the little things those little things are things you need to know um, practice 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 and I, and I did this um, we can set up a little slalom this darn rain is just being a pain in my rear end hopefully this will just blow over it's gonna do one of two things it's gonna blow over it's gonna get really ugly tell you what I'm gonna do just in case it gets really ugly and I think it's going to I'm gonna go ahead and load this up and we'll come back out later but there's maneuvering in a parking lot u-turns three-point turns they're not hard the key is think about pushing the trailer don't think about moving the trailer think about pushing the trailer the the front when you're driving forward you will get a feel for that almost immediately almost immediately all right it is gonna rain of course because that's how it goes let me get my jacket so what we'll do I'll go home and I'll offload this video do a little editing let the rain blow over and then I'll go back out and we'll do some highway driving interstate two-lane state road and even some uh, twisties the things that I ride the triple on so I'm gonna leave these cameras running so that you can look at the, the way I'm going as close to the curb as I can there there you go always looking always watching yeah that's gonna get ugly I need to get my butt home <laughs> I could end up getting hammered if I'm not careful all right Okay. That's good, man. Thank you. All right, let's get out of here. Yeah. These guys working, they're going to get They're going to get popped. I'm going to tell you that. All right, here we go. But you're getting the luxury now of seeing how the rain impacts it. I'm going to have to uh, shut down my 8, which is the one that's looking forward. It is not waterproof, and I'm going to have to take it off the side of my helmet right now cuz I can see that that's going to get bad. building up that's why I stayed close to home so you'll get to see this thing pull into the garage with the trailer uh, the rear end of the trailer will probably be out in the rain but that's okay so what I have to think about is the spider hitting things because it'll go hit it okay, so we got five. And in here got the track of the trailer All right, so we beat the gully washer home, that's good news. So let's uh, go offload a little video, do a little editing, weather will pass by, and then I'll get back. Tell hey, you, this week has been a very, very, you know, there, there are times as a YouTuber, um, and, and we don't talk about, I don't talk about this stuff, really. But there are times as a YouTuber, you spend a lot of time, and what I have to do, I have to get this thing this is where it's hard because I can't turn my wheels in here and I can't get enough of a, of a throw to turn because of Vicky's wheelchair ramp so I have to kind of play with it and it is very very difficult you can see how close things are in here and once I get it straight still having a hard time straightening it out I just can't get enough turn and then I want to get get it to go that way there we go so now I want to be able to push it, 
but I don't have any room. And those are those moments uh, when you're dealing with the trailer, you just have to be patient. There we go. Just straighten it out. There we go, perfect. There we go. But anyway, one of the things I was going to say is that being a YouTuber sometimes, you don't realize the things that can go wrong. Um, and like right now, I'm running three cameras. Um, all three cameras are important. But I can basically do without either one of the other two. I can figure out a way to make it work without those two. But without the one that, that I'm wearing, that I'm speaking through, um, then I have to do a voiceover. And I'm really trying not to do that. I like the audio quality. And I've gone out twice this week. Uh, once was my fault. Um, for some reason, I plugged the microphone in after I turned the camera on and it didn't convert over. Anyway, this time, when it happened, it just happened. Um, I had no audio. So I went for a ride in the rain to test, to, to do this and, you know, did a 30 minute ride and, and uh, had some good footage. And of course it all disappeared. But fear not, if it fails this time, I will do a voiceover. But before we get going, I want to say thank you to George for sending the uh, email with the question about the, the, uh, the trailer. Um, earlier, one of the things I did do, and, and not only that, but if you would, if you have questions, please send them. Um, that way I can respond to them and make a video about those things. I always want to make the content uh, not only entertaining, but engaging for those who have questions. I want you to understand that there is no disconnect here. I am one of you. I'm a guy that goes out and rides and loves to ride. And I love helping my fellow riders. So, as my dad would say, I'm not too big for my britches. <laughs> so keep those questions coming. Like this video, share it with your friends, and please, please, pretty, pretty, please, subscribe to the channel. You can see the standing water we had. I mean, we had a gully dang washer, let me tell you it poured and then when i was out again just a few minutes ago it poured again <laughs> but if you're watching you know you can you can see the uh the the trailer is absolutely stable now these roads are bumpy they're slick and they're narrow and i'm doing 60 miles an hour if i were to be concerned with something as far as traction or fear of sliding and losing control it would not be the trailer. It would be the spider itself. So understand that the trailer is extremely, extremely stable. I, can, I cannot overly emphasize how stable it really is. We're going to hit a road over here called McCracken here in just a minute. It's got a little, got a little curve on it. And it's going to pop out on another road called Bomb Road. And uh, McCracken's got a nice twist. Bomb Road's not the smoothest in the world. Uh, what I'm going to do about right here, I'm going to insert right up there, or I'm going to, through the magic of YouTube, go... And you're looking at a trailer, a Can-Am trailer, literally doing 90 miles an hour down the interstate on wet pavement. Um, that's the fastest I've ever had the spider up to. I just wanted to show you what it would do at what I consider a ridiculous speed. Now it's not a ridiculous speed on certain motorcycles, but on this one, I consider that a ridiculous speed. I just don't see a need 
for me to be doing 90 miles an hour. I'm the guy that cruises down the highway on this motorcycle at 70 miles an hour. This is a McCracken. Here's the curb. We're going right around it here. And this little curve here, let me tell you, this thing here, you can, I don't know if you can hear the tires, but I can sure hear that back tire on the spider itself making its little squealing noise. In fact, I just felt it kind of wrap around a little bit. And you can see the trailer just staying nice and nice and snug. So that's what the trailer does on even tight turns on semi-dry sandy pavement. Now this road here, you can look at it, you can see it's got like little step bumps. Now I will tell you on the on my on Oxford, my triple, right here, I actually get a little bit airborne. So you can see how we were doing, we went over that at 65 miles an hour roughly. Um, and it was absolutely solid. Uh, you can see the debris and stuff in the road. Now the pavement changes. It's pretty rough right through here. This is like a gravel top pavement. Um, I'm going to do a little kind of abrupt maneuvers there. You can see the, the trailer hanging nice and snug. Another big bump here. Ugh. Shake your bottom end loose. And you can see there, the trailer is absolutely solid. If the trailer will do 90 down the interstate on wet pavement, and handle McCracken and this rough road right in here, I I would believe that it will basically throw anything you want to throw at it, you can throw at it. I will tell you that when I stop, I will be able to smell the rubber on that back tire. That's how hard those turns were. And when I take those turns on my two-wheeler, you can you can rest assured that it's it, it's wearing that tire. And in these conditions, I would not attempt to take those turns at those speeds on a two-wheeler. I just wouldn't do it. That's how slick the roads are right now. All right, now this is Highway 90. Now Highway 90 is a two-lane road, but it is a state highway. So what we're going to do is, like I said, we've had a little bit of rain. We're just going to cruise this baby on up here to about 75, which is faster than I go on the interstate normally. Certainly two up, Coach Vic doesn't enjoy going this fast. In fact, we'll even do better than that. Hopefully there's no law enforcement out here. Going to write me a chicklet. <laughs> So there's 80 miles an hour. You can see the stability of the trailer right now. 85 miles an hour. So it's rock solid. It's rock solid. And we crossed the continent twice, and I can tell you there are certain areas where I-10 and I-20 were rough as a cob, man. Coming through Louisiana, certain parts of New Mexico just rough. Even some parts of Oklahoma and the trailer was absolutely solid. Also, when it comes to the elements, water on the road, um, we've been in some pretty serious thunderstorms where the spider started to hydroplane, but the trailer did not. Or if it did, I didn't notice it. So I would say that water will slow the spider down before the trailer will be impacted. Additionally, due to its low profile and low center of gravity, a wind does not negatively impact it. So the wind on the spider is way more difficult to contend with than it is on the, on the actual trailer itself. Crosswinds, when we were coming through the open plains out there and in the panhandle of Texas, where the wind is just buffeting all day long, 
But they did affect the spider. You have you have quite a large profile on the spider. Certainly when it was kind of off the nose and slightly to the right, you would feel it pretty bad. Uh, a direct crosswind with big gusts you would feel, but never with the trailer. The trailer was, was never affected at all. So there you have it. The, uh, the trailer is a solid bit of kit, I will tell you. I love it. I look in the rear view mirror and I have to remember that it is there. <laughs> so as we make our final turn towards home this afternoon, I pray that all of you are having a splendid, splendid day. So what I want you to do is go out by the motorcycle of your dreams eat right take care of yourself and remember if you're not having fun hey you're doing it wrong now go seize the day we'll talk to you soon <laughs>